so scared. Kimmy was acting weird to me. And that man upstairs, too. She... Ah! Uh, you... It was you two who did that to my boy. To my Tom. Little monsters. Was it fun torturing him? I saw how you treated him. You fed on him, didn't you? Did he taste good? How did my little boy taste? <gasps> Come. I'll treat this little one like you did my son. I'll eat her down to the bone and enjoy every last bite. so much to play a duet with you, Tom. Please forgive me. <laughs> Laura, Laura, I'm so scared. That's what Kimmy did. <laughs> she wasn't a monster, but she... I went upstairs because the door was open. And I saw Kimmy, and she was doing mean things to that man. And then Kimmy saw me. And she started chasing me, too. <laughs> That's why I, I went and hid. <laughs> so that's what's been happening. But if Jenny says so, uh, I must have... Laura, I'm going to find Parker and be with him. I'm not alone anymore. I'm not afraid of the loneliness. No. Not anymore. Yeah. I wish I hadn't lived to do these things, until just a few days ago, I had nothing to even regret losing. If, if I could go back in time and see myself the way I was, I would give her a, a hard slap across the face. Then I'd take her to meet you and Parker. And I would tell her, these are your friends starting today.
Laura, I've changed my mind. If I could just have another chance at life, I'd like to be reborn as myself. And I'd like to have you as my friend again. Promise? Would you be... Thank you. Thank you. I'm going now. Don't turn around, please. Please. There's no need to see me off. Remember, this isn't goodbye. We're friends. Friends for life.
don't know what to do. <laughs> Laura, don't ever leave me alone, okay? Please.
forbidden. And the darkness began to change. Strength began to course. And the strength began power. You swept a boat out into the swelling river and guided me across on a link of thoughts. Heedless of the water's fearful source. Severed from the markers of time. The smothering solitude thawed in your light and became a rising tree on a forgiving hill. The tree began a forest, and the forest called forth winged creatures that trace the contour of a heart as they flew, reconstructing brightness long since forgotten. They overflow, fall from the sky, murmuring their light, crystallize. In the verdance of the trees, gather what falls from the sky, you cried. Fly, you cried. Fly, you cried. Fly, you cried.
listen to me. I can't hold on much longer. I'm not gonna make it. Not with his injury. <laughs> Don't look at me like that. It's okay, Laura. I'm not afraid of dying.
don't want to lose it. It's a precious gift from your mother, Laura. Parton Laboratory. Parton! That's the same last name as yours, Laura. This is the Lucy Parton Laboratory. The entire facility has been shut down. Only authorized personnel are permitted access. Mm -hmm. This is the Lucy Parton Laboratory. The entire facility has been shut down. Only authorized personnel are permitted access. Please state your name. Please state your name. This is... Laura. Laura Parton. It's freezing in here. I'm a little cold. DNA scan completed. Laura Parton, please enter. Laura Parton's last visit was 27 years ago. Your associate is not cleared for access. Please wait here. It's okay. I'll wait for you here. I know you'll come back. I'll wait for you. I would like to welcome you to the visitor center. Please press any button for the information you desire. This facility houses the Lucy Parton Laboratory of the LPL Corporation and includes the Research and Development Division. 
The facility, which was moved here to Ultramarine City in 1971, consists of four separate wings. The visitor center, which also serves as the showroom. The main laboratory, where the actual research is conducted. The Parton Tower office complex, and the library, where all data is archived. The Lucy Parton Laboratory of the LPL Corporation was established by the Parton family in 1963. The primary objective of establishing this facility was to continue the research work in molecular biology and genetic engineering, particularly the field of cloning technology, initiated by then Chief Executive of the LPL Corporation and Director of Research, Dr. Lucy Parton. The cloning project was discontinued in 1974, several months after Dr. Parton was seriously injured in a laboratory accident. However, the facility continued to conduct research on agricultural applications of genetic engineering under a government grant until 1981. The genetic engineering technology researched and developed here by the LPL Corporation is still helping to feed the world by increasing the nutritional content of certain types of livestock and grain. Since 1980. One, only the visitor center wing has functioned as a showroom for molecular biotechnology and genetic engineering. All proceeds from the center are channeled to various university research funds. Dr. Lucy Parton, Chief Executive of LPL Corporation and Director of the Lucy Parton Laboratory, was born in 1932 in Chicago, Illinois. After a brilliant and much accelerated academic career, she and her father, the well-known entrepreneur and former LPL Chairman Roy Parton, founded the Lucy Parton Laboratory in 1957, an institute dedicated to research in molecular biology, particularly the then-fledgling field of genetic engineering. Lucy Parton is especially well-known for her work on mammoth cell cloning, a project that began in 1963 with the discovery of a perfectly preserved woolly mammoth found in the subarctic permafrost. Dr. Parton also left lasting marks in other fields, such as medicine and agriculture, before her life and work were cut short in 1973 by a research-related accident. All data concerning this technology has been erased. Laura Parton. A level D plus key has been issued in your name. You may access the main laboratory.
Laura, I'm right here. I know that you've come very far, my beloved Laura. It all began 38 years ago, with a genetic memory asleep in a wall of Arctic ice. In 1963, I began working on a special project using cloning technology to bring mammoths back from extinction. My team discovered a perfectly preserved mammoth specimen in the winter permafrost of northern Canada in 1971. And we were able to extract genetic material from the cell nucleus. Unfortunately, there was too much chromosome. mammoth, we found the undigested remains of a totally unknown organism. Mammoths were believed to be herbivores, but this one anyway had apparently eaten another creature. And what a creature! It looked human, but had a pair of wings sprouting from its back. We removed him. Yes, the creature was male, from the stomach for further study. Then I decided that we would extract a sperm specimen and attempt fertilization using my, my ovum and in my womb. I decided to give birth to a hybrid child, fathered by this winged human. The fertilization was successful, but the embryo developed without a trace of wings. That made no difference to me. The child was the fulfillment of my dreams. A miraculous collaboration between me and that being we found inside the mammoth. The baby was born in the early hours of December 31st, under the most spectacular display of Aurora Borealis that winter. It was born across that span of time. I took the first letter of my given name and added the Latin word for air. Laura. It's true. That was how you entered this world, Laura. <gasps> when I was in labor with you, I had a vision. Something akin to the will of the cosmos spoke to me and described something important, that a powerful spirit had appeared in the space was on its way to Earth from the far reaches of space, and that it would arrive on Earth when my child had become a grown woman. At that moment, for the first time, I felt the enormity, even the sin, of what I had done. But at the same time, I saw in you the hands of fate. Then, seven days later, my own life ended. <laughs> but others at this institute and the government wanted to repeat the experiment. They wanted to bring those winged human beings of prehistoric times back to life. They transferred my mind and will to this, to Zylo but without a compatible ova or a willing surrogate in which to bring the embryo to term, their efforts ended in failure. Look. <laughs> Laura, you must kill me. End your mother's torment so that no one will ever repeat this mistake. Do it now. While I still have my will. <laughs> Look, please.
himself to a fearful power and has been remade. The evil one knows you, my child, and shall seek you out. Go forward, Laura. You must not stop, no matter what.
Laura, Laura Parton, I am the great mother. Awake now, Laura, and Laura, know the planet you inhabit. Know the time you move through it. Awaken the memories that sleep within you. Laura, you must know and feel everything. This is Mother Earth. This is your home. Awake unto it. Laura, how many days has it been since the crash? Time just seems to fade into the distance for me now. It's strange, but I don't feel sad. The snow will soon cover my body. Time will cease to exist, and I'll disappear under the thickening layer of snow. And in that whiteness, all this will transform itself into water and earth. Over a longer period of time than I ever could have imagined. And maybe one day, I'll come back again as a very small flower. I'll blossom and grow. There's an interesting thought for you, Laura, don't you think? Me, as a plant? I've never so much as even had a plant in my apartment. But now I'm on my way to being reincarnated as one. Just think. Someday, someone may walk past me. They may be laughing or crying when they do. Or they may be full of hope or in deep despair. But it won't matter to me then because a flower doesn't care what it has or doesn't have. It just is protruding from the snow, waving in the breeze. But it's different with you, Laura. You must survive. Don't worry about me. I'll be staying here, thinking of you, dreaming of you. Laura, it's okay. You can do it. If anyone can, it's you. Thank you.
You, Laurel, will save your world. Feel the earth underfoot, my child. Awaken the sleeping memory of your wings and believe in the power that lies in the palm of your hands. That power will grant you miraculous things. Now go, my child. Laura, child of destiny, born across the shores of time. Listen well, my child. You do not know that this apparently endless universe does not have an end. That time, so infinite to misleading senses, will one day stop. You know so little, for you are but a child, a newborn. You must journey forth again, and this voyage will be far longer and much more terrifying. Now is the time to find him. Do you remember? Do you remember the name of the one who saved you? It was he who safeguarded your soul. Go and find him, and thus forge that power at last into one. Laura, my child, call his name. Speak his name, so that all lives and all that will be born shall be saved. Call him and recreate yourself as you were meant to be. Now, now, Laura. David. You, uh, 
drop this. Here, you wouldn't want to lose it, Laura. Oh, I'm sorry. I couldn't help seeing your name on this. Ah, uh, and besides, I feel like we've met before. read some of her work. I've never met anyone else who's even heard of her. She isn't widely recognized. At least, not yet. My favorite piece in this book is this. This poem, Light. It's about a sort of hypothetical woman its imaginary best friend. This woman is... Oh, I get it now. That's why I felt like we'd met before. Ah, you remind me of her. For me, if that sounds strange, but, <laughs> well, it is strange. I highly re recommend it. It's a wonderful poem. Everything Kimberly Fox writes is so filled with hope and love of life. Oh, Laura, look. David! <laughs> 